Fancy Scent Journey with me, Ryan. In this next section, we're going to pick up on duplexing and speed options. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or Twitter. Okay, so we're going to start with the duplexing. First thing to pick up here is it really ties nicely into what we've talked about thus far in the course, primarily around the historic side of things, with the previous video talking about collision domains and broadcast domains. If you remember, we said that if we had a hub, and on that hub we had, let's say, four devices connected to it, and one of these devices sent traffic into the hub, we said that because this hub is a single collision domain, that that traffic will be sent out to all devices at layer one, because this hub is ultimately just a repeater. Now because of that, it limits Ethernet and it limits it to what we call half duplex. Now half duplex means that traffic can either be sent or received, not sent and received at the same time. So if there was a host that was sending traffic into the network, everyone would have to wait until that host stop sending information or that host to stop receiving information before anyone else could start any sort of communication. And we said in our previous video that the carrier sense a multi-access with collision detection was the protocol or sort of technology if you like within Ethernet that was used to help with collisions and help to determine when a particular host can send traffic onto the wire because they're all in that shared medium. Well as time moved on we said that switches came out and switches gave the ability of everyone to have their own collision domain. This means that when traffic was sent into a particular port or onto the medium it wouldn't be sent out blindly to all other ports. The switch itself would have a CAM table and in that CAM table it would actually have a list of everyone's MAC addresses and it would be able to identify which port it should and shouldn't be sent out of. So because we had this improvement on the collision domains, meaning everyone having their own collision domain, we now had this ability for full duplex. This meant that someone on the, la on the wire can send and receive, at the same time someone else on another wire was sending and receiving, because they were no longer sharing that medium. So because of this historic reason, today duplex is an issue, because switches have to be backwards compatible, same with routers. In fact, all devices, even your NIC card on your Windows PC, your Linux box, wherever it may be, they all have duplex in because it's an Ethernet standard. And that Ethernet needs to ensure that it is actually running the same duplex and speed as its partner, otherwise there's going to be problems. Obviously, in this day and age, we rarely see hubs, so it's more of a historic problem, but it's certainly something to be aware of. So moving on from that, we know duplex can come in two flavors, half duplex and full duplex. Again, half duplex is where you can send or receive, and full duplex is when you can send and receive. Now the setting can be changed on the interface level. So you can actually go into the switch, into the router, or onto your NIC within your post or on your PC, and you can change whether it's half, full, or whether it's set to auto-negotiate. And it's the auto negotiate feature that came out around the time, uh, I think it was 10 base T came out, and it was to help combat these problems where ideally we wanted to make it a situation where you can plug and play hubs to hubs and switches to switches, and everyone would play nice. And there wouldn't be any collisions on the actual segment because everyone would revert back to half duplex if the device plugging in was only half duplex capable. Now it's a common course with slow speed and no connection during installs. So what do I mean by this? Not always are you going to have access to both devices connecting together. So let's say for example we have let's say a WAN provider and that WAN provider is handing off a router what they call a CPE <coughs> excuse me a uh, customer premises equipment and off the back of that CPE they've supplied you with a port and you've come along and plugged your device in 
but what you've noticed is your device here is set to auto negotiate meaning the speed is set to auto and the duplex is set to auto however the supplier has actually manually set theirs to full duplex now because they've manually set to, to full duplex when your device tries to negotiate they're not going to get a response because when you hard set the interface you're turning off the negotiation and because of that the Cisco device will revert back to the standard duplex settings and those standard duplex settings depends on the speed of the link so if the link is a 10 meg or 100 meg it will revert back to half duplex and if it's a thousand megabits per second or one gigabit it will always go full because a gig can never be half duplex so let's say you plug it in yours is set to auto auto the supply is set to full duplex what happens you become half duplex and because of that what you'll find is when you look at the interface statistics you're going to see a lot of collisions most likely late collisions and the traffic is going to be sparse meaning let's say this is a hundred meg link you're most likely going to see 45 meg at most you're going to see problems with latency and a bunch of other issues but ultimately it all manifests itself as this duplex problem obviously the way to resolve this would be to set yours to full duplex and of course you would clear the counters on the interface to ensure that those collisions have stopped and you would run a throughput test to ensure your speed is back to where you would expect it to be and that's relatively a common thing on installs but it's also a common thing that should be resolved very quickly by the engineer installing it and it will normally be avoided because you would expect your WAN provider to actually supply, supply you with not only the IPs you should be putting on this interface but also the settings that should come with that whether they'll be running full and of course what speed so the other thing to keep in mind with that is it can happen the reverse way so if the supplier is told you to set yours speed and duplex as full 100 and they've set theirs as 100 and auto negotiate then obviously they would go to half duplex and you're going to have less visibility on that but you're still going to experience the problems the slow throughput latency and potentially collisions so it's up to you and the supplier to ensure that both of you agree on end to end on what those interface stats are going to look like the amount of times I've seen faults go on for a long period of time and it's just duplex somewhere in the network it's very easy to fix but it's very easily overlooked now while we're on the topic of common causes of installs there's one other thing that's worth mentioning and even though it's going to get picked up on the next slide we'll just briefly talk about it here which is the slow speeds sorry which is the no connection element so regardless of how you configure the duplex you're always going to get some sort of connectivity so if they're set to half you're set to half you're set to also negotiate and they're reverted back to half or wherever it may be you're going to have some kind of connectivity where the connectivity is going to fail is if the speed has been hard set incorrectly so if your supplier for example it's installed maybe an ISR 2 something like a 2900 you come along and plug in your router but maybe your router is a bit older maybe the version before which is like a 2800 and yours only supports fast ethernet whereas the supplier supports a gig if they've hard set on their interface let's say a hundred or a thousand or maybe even ten or yours is being set something a bit different than this then it would actually cause the interface to go down down and the reason for that is because the speed is not used or not negotiated the same way as the duplex it actually uses some physical attributes of the cable in itself by looking at the electrical signals and it's called fast link pulses FLP and essentially it's the speeds cannot be mismatched on the interface so if one side is hard set and you've not hard set yours it should negotiate correctly if one side is hard set and you've hard set yours to something different it would cause the interface to go down down 
Okay, so our last point that's worth picking up is it tends to go hand in hand with speed. So I said previously that you can manually change the duplex at the interface level and hopefully normally your WAN provider or another provider that you connect into gives you the duplex settings. Hopefully they also give you the speed settings. Sometimes it's obvious. If it's a 100 meg cable then and you bought 100 meg bandwidth, it's obviously going to be 100. But again, it's important to know whether you should be manually setting that or whether you should be allowing it to auto detect. And 9 out of 10 times the duplex and speed are configured at the same time because they tend to go hand in hand under the interface. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes you cannot set the duplex on some devices without first specifying the speed. Because like I said, depending on the speed of the link depends on the default behavior that the duplex falls back to if it can't negotiate. So on some platforms you can't do anything until you specify that speed. Okay, so here we are, we actually have two switches connected back to back. We have our switch on the left hand side and we have what I've called the supplier switch on the right hand side. Down here we can see the supplier switch is plugged into gigabit 024 and our switch is plugged in in 1024. So what we're going to do is have a play around with the duplex and see the outcome of that. Now this particular switch here if we were to look at the running config for a particular interface, the interface we're actually interested in, we can see that there's been one config that's worth mentioning, which is the speed has been manually set to 100 megabits per second. And the reason for that is because one, we're not talking about the speed at the moment, and two, so the supplier is actually a gig interface. So in order to have it perform as if it was 100 megabits per second, I had to cap the speed down. So you can see here, I've capped the speed to 100. And the reason for that is because if it's not capped to 100, it would obviously be a gig. And because it's a gig speed, it won't ever fall back to half duplex. In this scenario, I want to be able to produce the effect of having two fast Ethernet switches connected back to back. So let's say that our supplier, as I previously mentioned, these two guys are running the auto negotiation and we can see the current status of the switch port by simply asking to show the interface that we're interested in at both sides and uh, this output gives us a lot of information but really what I want us to focus on here is just this bit here where it says full duplex we can say it's full duplex so again that's send and receive at the same time we can see the speed of the link and same is true over here 100 megabits and full duplex now again like I said previously you may not have access to both sides of the device so let's say for example our supplier has decided not to run the auto negotiation but instead manually configure the duplex in so what they're going to do is put full duplex on the interface so if we now look at the running config of the interface that we're interested in, what we're going to see now is duplex is full. You can see the port is now bounced and our switch will try to negotiate with the supplier but because it's unable to negotiate because putting that full duplex on has turned off that negotiation, let's see what it's done to our port towards the supplier. you can see it's gone back to half duplex and again the reason it's done that is because it's 100 megabits per second if this was a gig link and this was a gig interface and it supported the gig speeds it wouldn't ever result back to half duplex so in order to fix this we have two ways we can either contact the supplier and ask them to go back to auto negotiation or we can go under our interface and simply put the duplex back to full. Doing so will obviously bounce the port again and then if we look at the interface configuration once again by doing the show interface and the interface we're interested in we can see that the duplex in is back to normal. Just down here you're going to see a bunch of counters but the things to keep in mind with these counters 
is if you have a duplex problem, you're more likely to see the collision counter and the late collision counter increment each time. So the moment is zero, and even though it was previously half duplex, there is no traffic actually traversing through the switch. But if there were, you would start to see collisions, and that would be an indication that the link itself is running an incorrect duplex. So again, thing to keep in mind is either you hard set it at both sides or you agree to do the auto negotiation. If one side has set it as hard, then the other side cannot perform the auto negotiation. And depending on the speed of the interface will depend on the default behavior. On a 10 and 100 megabits per second interface, the default behavior is to fall back to half duplex. On a gigabit connection, running a speed of 1000 megabits, or one gig, it will always result to full duplex, never half. So moving on to speed, very quickly, then we'll jump back to the Cisco's. It can find the correct speed even if auto negotiation is off. So again, like I said, it works a bit different to the duplex in. If the duplex is hard set on one side, then it turns off the auto negotiation, whereas the speed is a little bit different. If on one of the sides I've not set a speed, but on the other side, I've set the speed to something that the devices can both handle, then it's able to still negotiate. And the reason for that is because, it, like I said, it uses this fast link pulses. It uses the physical attribute of the cabling and the electrical signals to determine the speed. Obviously, if I set my speed to one gig and the other side is only a fast Ethernet port, it will break. If I keep mine set to auto and the other side's a fast Ethernet port, then both will agree that fast Ethernet, which is 100 megabits per second, is acceptable. Now it can be used to limit speed, so if you've bought a particular service from a supplier, let's say you've bought a 100 meg uh, lease line from them, and they've only given you 10 megabit per second bandwidth through that line, then sometimes instead of applying some sort of QoS or policing to save on configuration, they would set the actual speed on the physical interface to 10. So again the only speed you can set it is 10, 100 and 1 gigabit per second or 1000 megabits depending on obviously the speed of the interface. If a mismatch occurs the link will go down so if I set mine to 10 and you set yours to 100 the circuit will go down down. If I set mine to 10 and you set yours to auto then you should negotiate to 10. And the last point is some platforms you cannot set the duplex without first setting the speed. Okay, so here we are back in the switches. Let's have a look at the current configuration. So we look at the show running config for our switch. We can see that the duplex is set to full, but you notice that there's no speed command. That's because again, like I said, the running config of a Cisco only shows the default. The default is for speed to be auto. Therefore, there are no speed commands on the interface. If we look at our suppliers interface, we can see the duplex is set to full. So then, now let's have a look at the speed. Now we know this is a gig link, so it supports up to 1000 megabits per second, but you can see it's actually reverted to 100 megabits per second because it's clever enough to know that the device on the other side, as in our switch, can only handle 100 megabits per second. If the supplier were to, for whatever reason, manually set theirs, to one gig, what do you think will happen to our port? Well, the port will bounce, but notice it won't come back up, and our stat, our status will stay down down. So something to put in consideration, into consideration is if your device is only 100 megabits per second, or only supports fast Ethernet, and your supplier is giving you a gigabit interface, or a device which supports gigabit speeds, then you need to ensure that they actually set theirs to 100 megabits in order for it to negotiate correctly with you. Now what if our supplier has set the speed to 100 megabits per second and again ours is set to auto, what do we expect to happen? Well, our interface has come back up because it's clever enough to see what signals are coming down from the supplier and able to put the correct speeds on it. 
Well, what if the supplier has used the interface speed command to cap it to 10 megabits per second? Again, at first glance, the interface shows up, up. But now let's say we've put an order in with the supplier to increase the speed from 10 to 100 megabits per second. So what we're going to do on our side is we're going to preempt, preemptively set ours to the speed of 100. The supplier remains at 10. Now what do you think would happen? Both interfaces will go down, down and remain down, down because the speed between the two devices are currently mismatched. Okay, so that's all we've got time for in this lesson. So let's just wrap up what we've learned here as a whole. We went through two main topics, which is the duplex and the speed. We said that the duplex is how a device sends and receives traffic. So half duplex would only allow communication to be sent or received, whereas full duplex allows it in both direction at the same time, allowing traffic to be sent and received. We said the reason half duplex was around was because back in the days where everyone shared a collision domain, i.e. plugging into a switch, sorry, plugging into a hub, they all had to share the actual medium. And because of that, the CSMA CD was very heavily used. Nowadays, in our switch environment, each device that plugs off the back of it is inside their own collision domain and do not share the medium. As such, each device can send and receive with the confidence that there's less likely to be any collision or other devices sending traffic on the same medium. And because of this legacy, or evolution is a better term for it, within Ethernet, today we come across problems with duplex mismatch where if the duplex is hard set on one side, it won't correctly negotiate with the device on the other side. So again, a few examples of that. If we have two devices plugged back to back, the default will depend on the platform, but most of the time it's both sides to auto negotiate and they would auto negotiate as full duplex. If one side is in hard set, the other side wouldn't be able to auto negotiate and will revert back to the default and the default will depend on the speed of the interface. If it's 10 and we're all 100 megabits per second, it would default to half duplex. If it's 1000 or one gig, it will revert always to full duplex. We then moved in to seeing some examples of that on the Cisco devices themselves and simulating some scenarios. After duplex, we moved on to speed. We said speed doesn't really use the same auto negotiation as what duplex does, but it still negotiates to some degree. We said again, the default for the platforms is auto auto. So they would both agree on the best speeds that each device can handle. In our scenario, we had a gig on one side and a fast ethernet, which is 100 on the other side. And they both agreed on 100 megabits per second. When we changed the gig to 1000 megabits per second, the fast Ethernet device clearly couldn't handle that speed and it was unable to interpret the electrical signals. And because of that, the device or the interface on both sides went down, down. We then had a look at what would happen if you mismatch the speed. If we had 10 on one side and 100 on the other side and they were hard set, again, it would result in the interface going down, down. If one side was auto and the other side was any speed, which both sides agree upon, then they can both auto negotiate. And in order to achieve that, they use the fast link pulses, which is a physical attribute that's used to obtain the correct speed. I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.